So they're projecting their own ambivalence onto you. Hello, beautiful human. Welcome to your Capricorn Bay Cross Watchers only reading. I am Princess India. If you're new and if you're family, welcome back, my friend and what's not or whatever. If you're not familiar with what the Cross Watchers Only reading is, it is a reading that I do with the intention to help out someone who is dating or in a situationship, relationship or entanglement or whatever with a Capricorn person is trying to gain some insight into the situation with said person. But I have heard through the grapevine, the grapevine meaning my comment section, that there are Capricorn people that do resonate with these readings. Well, all signs really. And uh, you just would want to look at it from the perspective of it being like flip-flopped. So even if you're a Capricorn dating another Capricorn, you would just be looking at this as, you know, a cross watcher watching a Capricorn, even though you're a Capricorn. I hope that that makes sense. So anywho, let's go ahead and jump into these cards and see what is going on with you guys for October 15th until I'll take both of them until November 15th. So first card out, who child? We have the five of swords and we have the six of swords. Okie dokie. And then we have the nine of swords. Okay. So cross watchers, <laughs> what this is looking like is a little analysis paralysis. You know what I'm saying? A little good old analysis paralysis like what is human life without that you know what i'm saying so i feel you guys are kind of flip-flopping in your head um you're conflicted on whether to stay or to go you know in this particular partnership and i feel that it's more or less every time you think to take a step forward and you're like all empowered about it and I would say like, this has been a pattern, but just present, like in this time frame that we're looking at, it's more or less, there's um, a decision that you guys made to like, just kind of, you know, step out of the situation just to kind of silence the conflict you have with this person. Cause it feels like it was hella tumultuous, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you waved your little white flag and things, but I feel now it's almost like a sense of regret. So it's like, now you're kind of looking back and you're second guessing yourself and you're trying to figure out if you did the right thing, right? Um, so it's like kind of thinking a lot of, I don't want to say shoulda, coulda, wouldas. It's just like, you know, did, did I, like, should I have been more understanding? Did I really do the right thing? Did I jump too quickly? But what I'm looking at, and this may not make sense if I say it out loud, but... <laughs> I'm just looking at the Six of Swords and the Nine of Swords, and I feel that the vibration of you guys moving forward, right, and this, um, this Nine of Swords with you guys being like kind of worry warding right now, it's like these vibrations to me are congruent. Don't ask me why. It's just the way that my gift be set up and things, you know what I'm saying? But it's more or less, it was a desire for you guys to create a sense of balance. But um, I don't feel that you made the wrong decision. You know what I mean? Even if, because I mean, we haven't gotten to the rest of the cards, but I mean, at present, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to say that you guys' decision to leave this conflict behind was the best decision. Now, how it is that that, you know, goes moving forward, it's like, we'll see, but um, you guys did make the right choice, I can tell you that. The next card that we have, who child, <laughs> is the Five of Pentacles in the reverse. Then we have the Eight of Wands. Then we have the moon card in the reverse and the eight of pentacles. This is interesting. Here's the deal. Um, I know a lot of people tell me that with these, it ends up being like a flippy floppy energy. Um, with this first row, I'm always looking at the cross watcher. With the second row, I'm always looking at the sign that you're watching for. 
Um, if those of you who feel like this doesn't resonate, like say hypothetically, if you and your Capricorn person had like a big fight and they just like broke up with you or just like ghosted, you know what I'm saying? The other way I would see this is that there was a fight, there was uh, a breakup, and then now they're regretting it <laughs> is a, another way that we could look at that. But with this five of pentacles, it's more or less, we're speaking to a sense of um, a time of stagnation, a time of um, just ugh, emotional bankruptcy that both of you guys are moving forward from. You know what I mean? Um, there's one element of my cross watcher person is more or less in a, a, a mental aspect, if you will. Um, it's like making the choice to, and I mean, this person may or may not know, but what I'm seeing for their cards, it's more or less with them. It's um, them quickly moving forward or quickly moving on if, um, if that makes sense. Ooh, this is a lot, dude. With this moon card, we have Cancerian energy, but this is all speaking to a sense of projection. Um, ooh, that is so much, dude. You know what this would look like to me if I were to be honest? Okay. <laughs> um, sometimes when people are in connections, right? And say if a person doesn't want to break up with you, or if a person like, usually when you see stuff like this is when a person like will start an argument so that you guys can break up so that they can go like cheat. <laughs> and it's technically not cheating because y'all was broke up type of deal. Like that's legit the vibe that I'm getting because it's more or less, it's like, there, with this five of, uh, uh, five of Pentacles being under the Five of Swords, it's saying to me that to my cross watcher, it's like this was like a real fight. But from this person's perspective, like it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like there was really nothing for them to be angry about. It just feels like an instigating type of thing. And just like, so my cross watcher's in this mindset of like, okay, so I need to move forward and like, try to like find the stability and things of the sort but then it's just like this anxiousness because you're looking back thinking if you could have done something different but it's like with the capricorn person it's the vibe with them with this eight of wands is like they're moving real quick behind the scenes if that's making sense you know what i'm saying so it's like it's something that they're doing that's like let me hurry up and do this type of deal. But when we get to this moon in the reverse and the eight of pentacles, it's almost as if it's saying that what is causing you so much anxiety is something that they put a lot of time, effort, and energy into orchestrate this projection. So it's, it looks like it was a fight that was started in you're being made to seem as if it's your fault. And it's like, now it's like my cross watcher is regretting, you know, and thinking like if you did something wrong, but it's like the vibe I get is like, this isn't like a lot of work was put in to make you feel as if you did something wrong. I hope that that may go, oh God, I know you lying to me. At the bottom of the deck is the devil card in the reverse, which is Capricorn energy. Oh my goodness. This is wild. And then we have the two of Pentacles and decisiveness, the nine of wands, and then the 10 of wands in the reverse. Oh child, there's a lot going on. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> when it comes to your Capricorn person, um, the first thing I would want to say with this, in all honesty, um, 
I would say that they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. Because I, I get a vibe with this person where they're non-committal because it's this whole sense of um, when they get too entrenched into something, they start feeling as if they're in bondage. But then there's like, there's a part of them that wants it. So it's, it's really like this whole um, have your cake and eat it too kind of vibe, if that makes sense. Because in truth, there's nothing lacking in this partnership. But it's like, the 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 problems and the fights and 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 just the unrest like the instability the unbalancedness of this partnership it's not because this person isn't getting what it is that they want you know because i think in some sense or another they are but with this two of pinnacles here it's a sense of indecisiveness which is saying that they don't know what it is that they really want so the true root of the conflict is not that there isn't anything here um, that's a value or that you're specifically doing something wrong. It's just like there's a part of them where they feel a connection with you. They like you. They want to be with you. But there's like a whole nother part of them that's like non-committal. So it's almost like they're kind of teeter-tottering in and out of a situation. So it's like as quickly as they come back is as quickly as they leave. You know what I mean? And I feel like this has been perpetuated so much, dude. Like, I don't think this is the first time that y'all went through this with this person to where with the nine of wands, it's like, it has, it's, and I don't know what's going on with this whole mirroring thing with everybody this month, but it's like, this person is on guard constantly, like hyper vigilant to make sure that the relationship doesn't get too deep right and when it gets too deep it's like they're gonna pull back and like ghost or like pull back don't talk to you like whatever the case may be to kind of neutralize <clears throat> to neutralize stuff again you know what i mean and that would more or less be explaining why it is that you guys are so much in your head like how i said in the very beginning like analysis paralysis it's almost as if you guys have been triggered so much with this person being so in and out that it's like you're not even in your emotional space anymore. It's almost as if you're in a mental space to where it's like you're trying to strategize and like, it's almost like preparing for a preemptive attack or something like that. So it's like, it's the same vibe of walking on eggshells. So it's like with this nine of wands, which falls into the underlying energy here, and even with the two of wands, it's like, I'm seeing the two of you like reflecting each other, but in a different dynamic, because this person is just inherently indecisive and ungrateful to be quite honest, because this situation isn't taking away from them. It's just that they don't know what they want, right? So because they're kind of like ambivalent where it's like they're kind of straddling the fence it puts my cross watcher person in a place to where you're in a consistent sense of instability. So it's consistently inconsistent would be what this is in so many words. But it's like, it, it keeps you in your mental space because you're constantly like analyzing and, and reanalyzing like, how am I here or, or, or what can I do different? Or like, what, what do they want? And like, you know, let me make sure I don't do that. But it's like, and the thing I want to say, dude, and I don't mean this like in the literal sense of um, like as a health thing, but it's like this situation makes your blood pressure high because this would be like with this nine of swords here, dude, this connection keeps you in a constant state of like unrest and anxiety to where you can't sleep. You know what I mean? You're thinking about it majority of the day, you know, because it's like, oh, well, I guess I have to move on now. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's like, I'm saying it like that, but I, I know it doesn't feel that way, but it just has you in this state of like, I don't know, dude, this is like crazy making almost because in the midst of all of this stuff happening, <laughs> It's like, you feel like it's your fault. So it's almost like this would be a person who makes themselves real, real small 
and why you're so much in your head is because it's like you're really strategic on how you speak what you say how you say it make sure you don't say it wrong it's like i'm not gonna accuse <clears throat> i'm not gonna ask too many questions i'm not gonna make too much of a big deal out of this and it's almost as if you've been conditioned over time to be in this state because of like this constant in and out this person's been doing or them consistently blaming you like accusing you of cheating on them saying you're being disrespectful you're not respecting me like throwing all kinds of stuff in your face and it's internalizing this and you really feeling as if you're doing something wrong you know and it's like you're trying to do stuff right you know but it's like somehow it's like this energy of what it is that they're doing now this still ends up happening and you don't understand why because it's almost like if we were to think about this dude in the sense of like the cycle of abuse right and some of you guys may be familiar with that some of you may not but um it's like a wheel we use in therapy that talks about like abusive relationships and how they follow the same pattern so it's like this would be like the conflict breakdown stage you know what i'm saying and then it's like you know sometimes you'll break up or they ghost you or whatever and then the person like comes back and it's like i'm sorry da 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 da, da. and then you're like in the honeymoon phase you know what I mean? And then it's like when the honeymoon phase runs out, then it's that conflict stage again. And it's like, I feel you guys are like more or less going back into this conflict stage. And it's putting you in a state of unrest because it's almost like you're trying to prepare yourself for the inevitable because it's like this person will just end up just like leaving again. You know what I mean? But it's like, I really get the vibe. Like you're trying really hard to fix yourself or change yourself or not talk to them that way, not be disrespectful, not be smothering. It's like, whatever it is that they're telling you that you're doing, it's like, you're trying really hard not to do that. And why? that's why you're so in your head and you're not even allowing yourself to act in accordance with your feelings because they're projecting on you to make you feel like you're the problem. But here's the deal. You're not really the problem though. It's like, it's this person's own indecisiveness. So if they keep you in a mental prison to where you're playing and replaying and going back and reading text messages and like, you know, maybe I said that wrong or, or, or maybe I shouldn't have said that like that or I shouldn't have raised my voice or I shouldn't have questioned them. It's like while you're in this mental space, they're able to maneuver doing what it is that they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because with this five of pinnacles in the reverse, it's really not a problem here. So when we talk about what's being projected onto you, it's this person's own indecisiveness. It's their own um, mental space that they're in where it's like, I don't know if I want to be committed or if I don't want to be committed, but then a part of me want to be committed, but then a part of me doesn't want to, but it's like everything in life has a consequence. So it's like, if you choose to be single, then you don't get to have a person on like in your life. That's like your ride or die that helps you do stuff and things of the sort. You just don't get that because you're single. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and if you're in a relationship, you don't really get the freedom to be able to see a whole bunch of different people and see how things are going to pan out like with different people, right? But it's like with this person, they don't want to deal with the consequences of either side. Like they don't want to deal with the consequences of just being single. They don't want to deal with the consequences of being in a relationship. So it's like they're trying to exist between two worlds, right? So they're projecting their own ambivalence on to you but how it's manifesting to you is the fact that you don't know if you should stay or go and that's where that whole vibe i was feeling of like i should move forward but i i maybe i shouldn't it's like well this is like this but no you know it's like it's manifesting with you in this mental space because they're projecting to you that you're the problem when you're not you know and it's like this person would be hella crafty like legit this is like really some narky kind of stuff like 
for someone to do that, like this is like gaslighting and 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 manipulation, dude. Like in a very serious sense, because this would drive a person mad. Because it's like as human beings, we like resolution. We're very one plus one equals two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like we like to know, oh, if I, you know, there's a stove that's hot. I put my hand on the stove and like my hand gets burned. It's like, that means don't put hand on fire. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we like things like that, but it's like with this person, and that's why I say like, it feels like high blood pressure, like, and not diagnosing nobody with high blood pressure, but I say that more in a figurative sense. It's just like, this person has your pressure high because it's like you're in a constant state of unrest because nothing is making sense. It's like when you do what they don't want you to do, okay, I'm not going to do that. But then when you do, don't do the stuff that they don't want you to do, there's still something wrong with that. So it's almost like a person that's impossible to please. But the thing I'm seeing with this moon reverse and this eight of pentacles it's like all of this stuff is, is being like intricately orchestrated for that purpose. Because as long as you're stuck in, in your mind blaming yourself, it gives them freedom to move. You know what I mean? And the main thing that they're guarding against is things getting too deep in so many words. But with this 10 of wands in the reverse, it's like... <laughs> And this is so crazy to me that this is like an exact mirror, dude. But with this 10 of wands in the reverse on your end, cross watcher, it's an opportunity for you to release the burden of this. Like you have that opportunity always, like to free yourself, like with the devil in the reverse, to free yourself from bondage, because this very much is bondage, toxicity, you know, falling into the realm of relationship addiction and things of the sort. You know what I'm saying? But it's like with your capricorn person it's more or less uh, it's almost like them dumping all of this burden on you so that they can be free from it because the main thing is it's like they're following what it is that they want to do you know because it's like i'm seeing dude it's like you keep trying to to move out of this and and to communicate to get clear to try to move out of this but it's like you can't pass go. You can't pass go. And, and the whole premise of this is, is this is a prison that's of this own person's making. You know? It's like everything that they're really doing is what they're telling you that you're doing. So it's just like one of those situations where you date somebody and they always accuse you of cheating on them. And the truth is, is they accuse you of cheating because they really cheating. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's that kind of vibe. But this person is orchestrating this for a reason. And it's, it's for the sole purpose of keeping them free to maneuver how they want so they can maintain them not having to make a choice. And if we look at the cyclical of if this has been something you've been dealing with this person for some time, it's more or less saying that with this devil in the reverse, it's like, if my cross watcher were to come into the realization that this is happening and that this has been a pattern over time, and if we use a little psych reference here, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If this person has consistently done this repeatedly over a span of time, you're running yourself mad trying to get a solution to it. This is more or less a um, option that's being offered to you to release yourself from this burden and to free yourself from bondage. Because it, it would seem as if this would continue until the foreseeable future, until this person made a decision. But we know that all of our behaviors, or we should know that all of our behaviors are motivated by benefits. So no human being engages in any form of behavior unless there's some sort of benefit or payoff right? For this person, there's a benefit to this behavior. Even though it's hurting you in the process, it's beneficial to them because they get what it is that they want, which is the best of both worlds, right? Even in the sense of we're even talking about somebody who might be married. <sighs> if you're dealing with somebody that's married and they're like telling you, oh, they're going to leave their, their spouse or whatever, 
and telling you stuff like that, that's just a side note. But it's like, this is beneficial to them. So even though it hurts you in the process, it's not saying that your feelings don't matter, but to this person, the, the thing that matters is that the behaviors they're engaging in are beneficial to them. So you would have to pose that same question to yourself. It's like, are the behaviors that you're engaging in beneficial to you? Like, what are you really getting out of this? You know what I'm saying? Because this is literally a, a being trapped in a prison of this person's own making. You know? Who child, this is a lot. Anywho, um, yeah. I mean, Crosswatcher, you, you have a choice. Like, the path is clear to follow through. You can free yourself from this, but you, you have to make the choice to free yourself from this or not. It's totally up to you. But if this is like a pattern with this person, it's like it's not going to change because it's too beneficial for them. And whenever it becomes not beneficial to them anymore to be like this, then yeah. But if they're a person who, you know, wants their cake and eat it too, or eat their cake and have it too is really the way that that should be worded, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, if that's beneficial to them, then yes, they will keep you in prison to their own desires, you know? So it's in essence being in bondage to another person's desires. Who child, this is a lot. So anywho, you have a choice to make. I'm going over to Vimeo, my website. Patreon and YouTube members to do you guys extended and in the extended we look at how this person is thinking and feeling about you at present to give you some additional information to weigh my friend so if you're about that life follow me over there if not I still love your face and I will see you guys sooner than later and hopefully sooner which means in the extended this got me feeling some type of way I'm just saying but you know I love your face I love you